50 years ago tomorrow, three men in spacesuits set off on the greatest scientific adventure of all time. As the astronauts of Apollo 11 headed to the moon, the women of NASA were blazing new trails on Earth. Two, one, zero, liftoff. That was great to get to experience liftoff and the shockwave hitting the room. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. It was a total relief when they landed. They're back from the moon, landing in the Pacific Ocean. It was a gleeful thing to watch splashdown. Poppy Northcutt, Joanne Morgan, and Margaret Hamilton were trailblazers, hidden figures critical to the success of the Apollo 11 mission. Joanne Morgan says it was life-changing. What it said to me and what meant so much to me is, hey, I am really now part of this team. Accepted in a profession not used to women. The big hurdle was getting past the fact that it hadn't been done. They did not have women in there at liftoff. And my director said, I want Joanne at the console. She's my best communicator. She's the one. She was the one listening to communications for problems and the only woman inside the firing room for the launch of the Saturn V rocket. The building shaking. It's still the most powerful rocket that's ever left any place on Earth. Man on the way to the moon. My husband looked at me and he said, honey, you're going to be in the history books. <laughs> I never thought about it. <laughs> She credits this mission and the rocket fuel in her blood for her decades-long career at NASA that took her from the firing room to the boardroom. They didn't really seem to have the awareness that a woman could have the same amount, if not a greater passion for the exploration than men. Capcom or stay for T1. With the astronauts on the way to the moon, the task of alerting them to any problems fell to Margaret Hamilton and her team at MIT. Eagle Houston, if you read your go for power defense, over. You had to solve things that had never been solved before. Hamilton's group wrote the Lunar Lander's guidance software, and they had to plan for every contingency. You had to say, well, what if the astronaut put in this keystroke? What do we do to recover from it? Eagle Houston, you're a go for landing, over. Something unexpected did happen as Eagle was approaching the moon's surface that could have jeopardized the mission. 1201. 1201. Roger, 1201. 12 alarm. My first thought was, how can this be happening now? I personally remember it as what I call sheer terror. Okay, we're go. We're go, same type, we're go. There was no need to abort. Her software was fine. That's one small step for man. It was the first time man walked on the moon and the first time software ran on the moon. But the most critical phase of the mission had yet to come. Does it look different? Yes and no. It's much more pristine. Poppy Northcutt, the only woman inside of mission control, calculated the maneuvers that would bring those astronauts home. You were plotting out every kind of scenario. You always are thinking about all kinds of possibilities. How nerve-wracking was that? Well, it's very nerve-wracking. It doesn't matter how successful any other stage has been if you don't get them back safe and sound. Apollo 11 is back from the moon, safe and sound. The world celebrated the mission's resounding success, but Morgan and Northcutt say they endured other challenges that were not as public. Sexism, obscene phone calls, nasty remarks, and even cameras positioned on them. I found out that there was a camera that was just pointed at me in one of the back rooms. Why was there a camera pointed at you? Because I was a novelty, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I discovered that by chance. But it was also an opportunity, I felt, to encourage other women to go into science and technology and understand that women could do these jobs. Did you realize that at the time, that your role? You did. I did. In I what was way? Very, I was just very aware of it because I got letters from all over the world from little girls and boys saying, I didn't know women could do this. So I was very aware of it. And women can. And tomorrow night we will be reporting from the Kennedy Space Center and bring you a primetime special, Man on the Moon, at 10, 9 central.